Welcome to Empire Building, the podcast where we talk about building big businesses and even bigger lives. I'm your co-host, Seychelle Van Poole. And I'm Sarah Reynolds. I'm Wendy Papazan. And I'm Via Williams. Today's episode is Things That Are Going Caddy Wampus. Yes, you heard us right. (laughs) Caddy Wampus. And Wendy just gave us a whole history of the word. But basically, here's the story. It's things that are going askew in our lives because that is the definition of Caddy Wampus. And what happened is we came to a recording session and no one had written anything because we are so busy and so overwhelmed, a little bit stressed, and there's a whole bunch of different reasons for it. So we decided we were just going to walk through what's stressing us out right now. Like, what are we going through? How are we, you know, how are we talking about it? How are we processing it? How are we tackling it? Is that right, ladies? Did I get that right? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Although you Absolutely. did say a little bit stressed. And I think that's a, a okay. very I was trying generous to make understatement. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, because I, w- I actually had the same thoughts, say, because I was thinking, I think that's every episode. Like when we come, we all have those things going on. Except <laughs> that's, that yes. shows how all we are right now. Like how catty wompus we are right now. <laughs> because, yeah. Totally. Yeah. That yeah. doesn't make yeah. sense. Well, and, and I would say that underlying all of it is this feeling of we're all emerging from our pandemic era. There's a lot of things that are changing. We're all in an incredibly insane real estate market. And those two things kind of underlie everything, right? And in, a, mm. in addition to that, we've got other stuff going on. So Sarah, why don't you start? Why don't you tell us what's going on with you? Well, I am extremely overwhelmed, both uh, personally and of course, work-wise. We've had amazing growth in our business, which is which is awesome. And my husband sat me down two nights ago and he was reading The Leaders, that last book. And he said, you know, it dawned on me that your business has grown tremendously in the last couple of years and you have not redefined your role in a long time. And part of why you're feeling overwhelmed is you're now doing five other jobs again based on the size of the business. And he's like, you have to redefine your role or this is not sustainable. Just to tell us... Tell our listeners where you were two and a half years ago, maybe with what your team looked like, Mm -hmm. what your sales production was, and then what it looks like now. So as a reference point. Okay, so two years ago, so we were looking at 2019. Uh, So two years ago, we did um, about 9.8 million in gross commission income. That was about, uh, let's see, 500. No, that was the year we did 750 families uh, served. I don't do volume as much. Um, just that's okay. I don't, yeah, that's but, a, uh, but that's that's those good. are the numbers. Yeah, that then right now we're pacing at twenty five million gross commission income. We're in multiple markets that we weren't in two years ago. So as well, so there's multiple businesses in addition to our current business, and we'll right now we're pacing about two thousand families served. Yeah, in my roles, that's triple. amazing. <laughs> yeah. Almost triple. Yeah, yeah. Almost so triple. it's been it's exciting, but it is. Um, Right now, I would say it's not worth it, how I'm feeling, to be honest, Mm -hmm. because of how overwhelmed and lack of sleep and everything I have going on. Mm -hmm. So I have a big thing I'm doing this weekend. I'm going to take some white space time and I'm just going to write down what I love about what I do right now. And that's going to be my new job description, what I don't like about what I do. And I'm going to leverage and hire the right who's for the things I don't like. So that's going on this weekend to try to get out of this sort of spiral I'm in. Well, kudos to you. This is such an aha to me too, Sarah, because I feel like I feel like that's that's what I'm going through too. And I think a lot of us go through that where one day you look up and you're like, why am I so stressed? It's the same, you know, same role, haven't changed. Mm-hmm. But then you realize it's a comp- it should be a new role. Well you the know? thing, you know, yeah. and it's sometimes it's like people, you know, our husbands know us so so well, right? Mm-hmm. And he was like, if it, it feels like you are not willing to admit you need help. Which is so crazy because we go through that sort of in the beginning of building a team, you know, like like it, like this anxiety over it, and then you go through all those things again, the same sort of like emotions, the same. And he's like, "You got it," and he he pinned it as a little bit of pride, which was like eye opening. But I think he was right. The more I thought about mm-hmm. it, like you need more help. Like you cannot do run this kind of size of company by yourself. And I'm not doing it by myself, to be very clear. I have not done this right. growth by myself, uh, but I need a high, higher level leadership um, across the board. So yeah, 
But thank you. Well, and I would well, I would yeah. ask you how many people report to you directly. Uh, right too now. many. Yeah. So that's what ma- that's what we talked about. Do you, do you, I mean, do you have but how many? Like, what, yes. that, what does that look like? Mm-hmm. Nineteen. Nineteen. Yeah. 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 And so you should probably have five. No. Yeah. I, I think I don't disagree. I don't agree. So my okay. standard is Jesus. Well, he had twelve. Okay. And mm-hmm. but I'm not Jesus clearly. So I say ten well, to eleven. Is my That's like Seychelles. Seychelles actually Jesus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But the, but the big thing is like, you know, and what my leadership team keeps calling me out on is like a desire to have a relationship with all 160 people is impossible. Like a deep relationship. And I keep fighting it. I keep fighting those levels because I want to keep the relationships. And it's like, well, you're not doing a good job at, yeah. with those relationships to begin with. Well, at this yeah, point, but so. I do think it's, it's important that we have relationships with what I call the grandkids. So I do think it's important that we have key relationships with the people that report to the people that direct report to us, like grandkids mm-hmm. and then a little bit of great grandkids. Because what happens is if suddenly your direct report leaders, you know, leave, then you're kind of left stranded. Like you have to be at least two levels down in your relationships. Mm-hmm. And I would argue that, you know, Wendy, I didn't mean to like be like, no, no, no. But but I think that it's just... I'm crying over here. I know you're crying. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm like <laughs> softening. But the thing is, I, five is is too... It's an ivory tower answer. And the real the reality is no one... It, no organization I know... Really, it's more like 10 or 15 that, that I think well, is more I think realistic. the key... I mean, what I already... Like I led a, our leadership book club and had about... 25 team members come this last Wednesday. And I think the key here, that's what I want to do. I want to do more of that, (laughs) which is spending Mm -hmm. time like masterminding and teaching and help, you know, being with all of my people and not just, but though it's the, all the one-on-ones. I think what Wendy is saying is like, who is coming to me for everything? Like, and that's a lot. 19 is too many for sure. And and you can have the great grandkids, you know, like I think about Jay at Keller Williams International. And when he jumped into the vice president of learning role, he actually did have about 15 direct reports. And he just, he said, you know what, that's not going to work for me. So he took a leader in each of those two teams. And those are the people that reported to him. And then, you know, he still Mm -hmm. has a relationship with everyone underneath, but... Like that's just how he operates better. He's like, I can't be. Otherwise, I'm mm-hmm. just I'm I, all I'm doing is managing yeah. those relationships. And if you're yeah. someone who, honestly, via you're very probably very skilled at it. If you're not a person who's skilled at managing those interpersonal relationships like that, bouncing them around, then you do you do need to have less people report to you. Well, I think that we're both right. I think we're actually probably talking about the same thing. Here's where like, I jumped on it quickly, though. Here's where I think the caution is that I get nervous about is I get really nervous. You know, The longer we can stay horizontal, the better. What, the minute you start going vertical in your organization, it just it becomes bureaucratic. You're getting filtered information. We, we've all witnessed it. In company That's how work. I had a lot of turnover last year. I have for a long time. Yeah, yeah I have for as long as possible. It's yeah. too long. Like I'm at a breaking point, so I get that. Yeah, Yeah. I have to do some things. Of course. So yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, I did the opposite though, and I went vertical too quickly, and then lost relationships with a lot of my key people because I allowed the person in between me and them to Mm. to do Mm -hmm. that. And that was to Via's cautionary tale. I lost the trust of the organization below that because the person in between wasn't succeeding at as high a level as they needed Mm -hmm. to. And that was actually how I had kind of my my big massive team failure last year. And, you know, and it's on me. I own that. I'm not like, you know, shying away from the fact that it was my failure as a leader that that caused some of that. But yeah, you're right. I think, I think you, you thinking that through that though, Sarah, on how can I be more purposeful in teaching and engaging in other ways will create a nice buffer between the two, like kind of hills and valleys, if you will. What's going caddy wampus with you say? You know, I feel like I probably have been the most conservative of our empire building crew over the last year with COVID, where we have like almost been sheltered in place for a year. And I've been leading my team exclusively virtually, hiring virtually, uh, schooling virtually, everything. Like I have not been on a plane or really been in any sort of a group setting in a year. And I'm like, we're now fully vaccinated. Our daughter's still going to finish out the school virtually because at this point we're like in it to win it. But we're like, I'm literally crawling out of my COVID shell. Like, I feel like I have been like Hermit the Crab and I'm coming out of my COVID shell. And it's like, 
I'm having to relearn how to set schedules. I'm having to relearn how to set boundaries. Like being in public is like really weird. I feel like I'm just like this different human kind of coming out. And I'm like having to re recalibrate everything right now. And so kind are of you back going to where from, we were last year. Are you going like all, like are you doing steps or? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely baby steps. I'm not just yeah, like okay. that, that like girl that goes to, you know, away from home to college for the first time and is like, wow. Like that's not what's happening over here. <laughs> I was gonna say that could be that could be very yeah, scary. No, 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 no. Um, but I mean, even just you know, like this is an example. Like we had, it, like you know, with my dad's Parkinson's, we just had to be so freaking careful. And so, like, we actually had a play date at a friend's house yesterday inside without masks on, like oh, for the first awesome. time. You know, and like that, that, that to me is like college crazy right now. Have so you gone I to like so- restaurants or anything yet? No. Because if you're vaccinated, aren't you? Didn't they say Pfizer is like 100% now? It's it in could the 90s be. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's sort of that, like to what Sarah was saying, though, it's like, it's like slowly, you yeah. know, like kind of unpeeling yeah. the onion back. Like, you know, and the other thing too is like our kids still aren't vaccinated, you know? So I'm also kind of mindful of that too. You know, if we have a lot of like neurological and like underlying DNA stuff in our family, it's like, do I really, like, how much do I really want to test those systems on my kid? So, you know, and I know a lot of people listening to this are going to be like, wow, Seychelle, you're kind of like a weirdo. So that's cool. But, <laughs> you know, no, I don't think I don't think you're a weirdo. I think that a lot of us that are kind of chargers and, and hard drivers haven't really processed what we've even mm-hmm. gone through in the last year because we've yeah. been doing what we always do, which is go, 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 go produce, produce, yeah, produce, make doing. it happen. Yeah. And, you know, uh, Gus, my 16-year-old son, so in Texas, you can get vaccinated when you're 16 now. And I got a Mm -hmm. last-minute appointment for him. And when I was there with him, I just started to cry. I'm going to cry now. I I didn't even realize all that emotion that that was there inside me around that as a mom. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, it was, I'm going to cry. It's it's, it's all there. You know, we've all been so scared for the Mm -hmm. people in our lives. Did, is it? Yep. Is the crying coming from a sense of like relief? I made everybody cry. <laughs> I know. Is it, is it coming from no, the balls? Yeah, crying yeah, right yeah. Now. No, it, yeah. It, it was. It was all. It was all. Re, it was relief. relief. And, and it's like I didn't even realize how how scared mm-hmm. you are for the people in in your life. And and I know that's been so real for you, Seychelle. And it's been, you know, so real for me too because my you know my stepmom she was diagnosed. With, with COVID and basically we flew out there because of the doctor said she was going to die and my dad yeah. has been in a wheelchair and all alone and like all of those feelings around the people yeah. that we care so much about are just so there and um, and so some of that's unpacking that you know I think we almost need like a a cultural therapist mm-hmm. like, you know like to, a reintegration to, to address or, it yeah, yeah. A reintegration yeah. therapist because it, it is it's very real and I haven't process it that much, you know? Yeah. Well, and, it's you know, like, I think this last year, like trying, I mean, everybody's in a different place. I think that was something we talked about before we started recording. Everyone's in a different place. And so it's like, I know I have some team members that are so ready to be back in person five days a week. I have other team members who are still not ready to leave their home. And so as a leader, I think I, I still feel that like underlying just everyone's in a different place. And how do you lead and and grow and cast the vision and manage, even though I don't love that word manage, but I think manage to that. And then, you know, on top of that, just like having a seven-year-old and like a marriage and wealth building and a lake house that's under construction and just like, you know, in Michigan, when you're in Texas and all the things, it just like, (laughs) Wendy and I were texting this morning and she was like, how are you? And I was like, I'm just, I'm in it. And she was like, specifically what? And I was like, all of it. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's not one area. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I don't Lots have one area. subsequent text messages. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I, do you want a journal? I can send you my journal notes. But no, I am. The one thing I will say that I have gotten back into is reclaiming my body, which like just getting back into making sure I'm running at least two miles a day again has been sort of my like, I actually get to listen to us on, pod, on our podcast. Um, I love that. On sake. part of my run. But it's uh, that for me has been sort of my like reclaiming a sense of myself again for the first time in a year. And that really has been in the last like three weeks. So that feels good. You know, I've often like found in times where I've gotten fit or lost weight that it's a control thing, that it feels like there yes. are times where that's the only thing I can control. Yes. When everything around yeah. me is 
just crazy that I feel in control when I can do that, you know? You know, speaking of someone who has really gone to great lengths to do that, though, in the last year, you know, Via, you really have done that. So how how are you right now? Yeah, I mean, my my health journey, it's never going to be a straight line up or down. It's always going to kind of be a wavy one. I lost 70 pounds, I don't know, three, four years ago, and I really kept it off well. I mean, I kept it off for a few years. And then then I got injured and had vertebrae surgery, which isn't an excuse, by the way, but it is what the bottom line is. It is kind of what caused me to get out of those habits. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I started a new role, kind of changed my life around in 2018, gained 20. And then I gained another 20. And then COVID happened. The next thing I know, I'm, I'm plus 50 of the 70. And mm-hmm. then COVID happens and I gain the last 20 to hit me exactly mm-hmm. to the same weight that I was before I lost You did? Weight. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that. I didn't, well, because it was gradual. Mm-hmm. See, that's the thing, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. It was like kind of gradually and then suddenly Slowly it was there. Slowly and suddenly. So then, you know, when we were kind of pulling out of that first COVID thing and we were kind of going into the fall where it kind of was the first little mini reopen or whatever, I started 75 hard. And that's when I lost like 30, what did I lose? Like 31 pounds. It was pretty crazy. And then I started round two of 75 hard in January. And I bottom line is I, I, I've lost 40 of the 70. But the reality is it's probably bounced up a little bit because I've noticed over the last month, I'm kind of just falling back again. So, and that's kind of what I do. And I kind of take, I tend to take little breathers and then I'll kind of go the next round, right? I'll kind of like, you know, go hard. But so I, I'm probably, I don't think I'm in a good place actually right now with my health, but I don't think it's permanent. Well, change is hard. And well, yeah, and I, and you know, there are so many habits that we adopted as a result of the pandemic, even just like True. putting on your mask when you're going to the store. Yeah. So we've spent the last year, you know, coming up with these new habits, like what do we give someone an elbow bump instead of shaking their hand? What mm-hmm. do we do? And so now we have to go back and, and do all of that again. And change is so hard, mm-hmm. you know, 70% of the world, if you, if you study the disc is a high S and their number one fear is, is change. change. And so, yeah. and, and we're, we're, none of us are high S's mm-hmm. and that's the world around us right now. And yeah. we've got people on our team that are like that. And so we're, we're feeling some of that energy and angst and trying to figure out what the new habits are. And for a lot of us, you know, we're like, Via, like I know for me, we got into some terrible habits uh, health-wise this past year. You know, basically eating a bar of chocolate before we went to bed, not walking the dog as much, Mm -hmm. um, you know, and a lot of stress, not sleeping, all of of those things. And so Jay and I are also on a, um, Mm -hmm. we started Mm -hmm. a diet and it's been super hard. I mean, these last two weeks I've been we started like a keto type diet and it's, I'm, mm. you know, my body is not liking it, you know? <laughs> Jay, um, Jay, well, the so first two weeks, sleeping, it's, yeah, first two weeks are the hardest of that. Jay texted yeah. me, goes, well, yeah. man, this keto flu is no joke, right? This, yeah. it, and I said, <laughs> yeah. Jay, you don't want to hear this. It took three weeks and four days for me to get yeah. out of that mm. when I did it. That's a long yeah. time. But yeah. when I did, well, it was and great. of course, guess of course, Jay lost ten pounds the first. Of course he did. Of course, of course, of course he did. Yeah, yeah. Not, including, not including four pounds of fat. I'm like, come okay. on. Yeah, what? it's not fair. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The first so. week. Yes. Four pounds. Of fat. Oh my it's, goodness. Men are amazing. Men are amazing. Men are amazing. It, just, it just falls off of them. It's just like it melts off. You're like, yeah. do you know what? What do we have to do to get that? Have yeah. you guys so, ever done uh, something that, like that together before, Wendy? A diet? Uh, no, we've never done that before. Okay. And uh, you know, we 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 gained we gained a lot of muscle during yeah this yeah, past year because we've been we've been mm-hmm. pumping iron a lot. So I'm you know I'm worried that we're going to lose some of that. But it's just we just have to get into a, just a different habit now. We just, yeah. we just well that's that's the thing. It's habits. all we've cre- all created so many different habits. Like I mean, mm-hmm. we created the habit of not going to church. Yeah, that's a big and, one. And for us, I we were in church for 36 years. Like, yeah. And it, I mean, George and I had to sit down and be like, this is an awful habit that we've created in our family. For us, this is a big deal. And I mean, there's, mm-hmm. and, it's, and it is a habit. We need to, I think that using that word is good for our mindset because then it helps us. We've all had to break habits, right? Mm-hmm. Or create mm-hmm. new ones. And so I think using that word uh, for is, is important because I think it's realization of it and then putting the steps in place to fix it. 
Can I ask a question? What habits did you create for any of you all? Which habits did you create during this past year that you want to keep? Honestly, Zoom meetings. I know that that gets a bad rap right now. And everybody Mm kind of wants to reach through their device and punch me in the throat for that. (laughs) But, you know, I actually think that that's been a game changer to not just just to take away this this driving everywhere and and this just cumbersome, sorry to say it, in-person process. I still miss meeting people in person. It's not that I I, I want that to go away. But I mean, you know, 75% of my meetings can be Zoom now. Yeah. And I think that's a good I miss I miss the hug from meetings, but I actually think we're far more effective on Zoom. Well, speaking of uh, of Zoom, like recording this podcast this way, Mm. remember when Mm -hmm. we first started, we were talking about how often we were going to have to fly to Austin. Austin. Like once a month or whatever. Once a month, yeah. (laughs) Like this habit of doing the podcast on Fridays in our our homes or in our offices, that's for sure one we're keeping. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So for sure. You know another one that I... I love that I learned from B. I was just conference, like instead of doing some Zooms, doing some conference calls and taking the dog on a long walk while I do it and being able to do those for exercise, like the walk and meet at the same time, whether it's in person or on the phone. Walk and talk. Mm -hmm. The walk and talk. I love a walk and talk. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's trying to figure out, figuring out like who's on your team, who prefers to work virtually, who wants Mm -hmm. to work in person. Um, and it's been interesting. I've been hiring for a new position on our team and the candidates feel very strongly one way or the other. Mm-hmm. And so it's almost something that we're probably going to have to take into consideration moving forward because there's going to be some opportunities that are okay with remote and some people that some some opportunities that they have to be there in person. And you're going to get candidates who gravitate towards both. And so you're, that's going to be a question that you're going to have to ask because a lot more companies are going to be a lot more remote. And I just want to, I'm on sort of probably the other end of say on things. I, right. Right. Which I think is it right. good because that shows our people like that's the same thing. Like we have, mm-hmm. you know, my, my dad labeled green, yellow, red, and then making sure you're leading each group based on yeah. sort of who they are, which helped me when he when he shared that with me. But it's also okay. And to have, explain that, Sarah. Explain yeah, that. Yeah, that's a good explanation. So, yeah. so my dad's a pastor of a pretty uh, large, large church and a remarkable, remarkable leader. And, you know, he shared with me that he, for the church members, what he did is he came up with a sort of labeling system of green um, are people that are wanting to not, are wanting to see people in person, have been wanting the whole time, you know, are sort of on the Mm -hmm. uh, like other, some of them not believing things that the media is saying, or, you know, there's all kinds of extreme extremes there as well. And then yellow or sort of in between that. And then red are like, you know, say would be in red of like stay Mm -hmm. home, shelter in place, and so what he did was he put all of the people and then he made sure that he was leading them based on who they were. Oh, I and and that. I think mm-hmm. that, that was powerful for me because when in the beginning, I, you know, I was leading people all on red. I was mm-hmm. treating our whole organization. Everyone. Like, yeah. Everyone. In the green, we're having issues. Uh, we're having a lot of problems that I, I was not seeing. Yeah. And so that was really eye-opening for me. But now I don't remember what was the point of me sharing that. <laughs> I'm so, sorry. Well, I think guys. it was that you and I are on different ends of that. Like as far as where we have been personally, like well, you've what been I was going to say was, the whole time. you know, I just, I'm just speaking to the the leaders here that are listening. Mm-hmm. It's okay to like say it, it. You part of the right of being the leader is it's your company. Like so, it's also mm-hmm. okay. There are differences, but I would encourage people. You know, it works the way it, we say it works. So if you do want in person. If you do, then you just put that in the ad and you make sure it's Mm -hmm. like you have permission to do that. And I think that that is not what people are hearing right now. And I think people do need to hear like, like say has permission to lead the way that she wants her company led. And I have permission to lead the way that Mike, I want my company led. And if you feel like that's the best thing for your organization, then make the hard decision and move forward with it. Yes, you're understanding, but at the same time, the best thing for your organization is a confident leader that is guiding the ship. That's the best thing for the organization. Yeah. And so make sure that you're that you're doing that. So Yeah. Well, and I guess my point with that was is that there are going to be some candidates who don't realize 
that they're one way or the other. And so it's your right. job when you're interviewing them to really like put that like as adding one of your that in as questions. a question. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah to, to, good, to help them self discover that. Yeah. yeah you know, so good. going back really quick to the red, yellow, green, you know, I read an article that just reminded me that our events are probably going to look like that. That as we come back to in person, yes. you know, conventions and events, that there might even be color coding on name tags so that you know if it's, you know, if it's red, like, you know, stay six feet away type of a thing. If it's yellow, you know, you're going to do an elbow bump, you know, whatever that is. If it's green, you can walk up and shake their hand and, and hug them. And I think that's, you know, actually kind of cool, especially for yeah. introverts. Well, that's, <laughs> yeah. well, well, or people that just haven't liked being close to people to be with. Like pre I think yeah. it's like, this is a dream come true. Totally. Totally. Kind of yeah. 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 I mean, we've done all of our team events that way. A lot of them outside, but we still have name tags and we had different signals. And so, every, and I said, you got to be respectful of each person mm-hmm. and make sure that you're looking there first before like crossing a line or, you know, and I think that that is important mm-hmm. for sure. That That's for sure going to happen with events. So, Wendy, I'm curious because we were talking about health and stuff, but is that what is the most cattywampus with you right now? Like, what's going on with you? Well, that's kind of underlying everything, which is I just don't feel great these last couple of weeks because of this new diet and that's causing me not to sleep. And you guys know I'm, I'm, that's my number one domino. That's one thing. I'm not like you guys. I got to sleep. And so that's, that's been tough. And then, you know, you know, Jay's dad has some health stuff going on, which is kind of scary. My team is in a growth mode, which is always exciting. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. And I love where we've come, you know, where we've come in the last year, but it's, it's always more work when there's new people and we're growing and things like that. And, um, and then honestly, for me, it's this kind of underlying restlessness about, you know, I feel like, I, and I don't want, this is going to sound terrible, but in a way, this past year for me has been like captivity. Um, yeah. You know, I'm like the mountain lion that that's, exactly. that's been feeling caged. And uh, I've just suppressed all that and it's all fine and it's okay. And I've I've got this like burgeoning sense of like, I need to get out of the cage right now. And I'm feeling it in such a way. And this is just me like being real vulnerable right here. You know, I'm, I'm almost like want to completely get out of everything. You know, I'm having, you know, and you guys all feel this when, when you're running yes. your teams where you're like, I'm, I'm done. This is yes. too much. I don't like this anymore. I don't like anything that I'm doing. And, and it's not that. And I'm working with, with my coach to really figure that out because the way I enjoy my team is, is, is I come back, I, I do the work, I get to travel, I get to speak, I get to get out during the day, I get to meet people and I haven't been doing that. And so it's like a whole year of that is compressed. And um, so I'm feeling like that complete uh, restlessness, you know, and I just want to do new stuff and I can't right now because I've got, you know, I've got to get, I got to focus on my team. So there's just a lot of like inner conflict and it, it's yeah. like a, you know, I, I, I hate to like whinge about it, you know, because a lot of people have a lot of like real serious problems, but I think probably other people are feeling that way too, you know? Oh, I, think so. I think it's, so. it's just a matter of where you are. I don't think there's right or wrong. I think it's just yeah. a matter of where you are. And that's okay to, you know, as you beautifully say all the time, we give you full permission to be where you are right now. Mm-hmm. And I think for a lot of us that are high drivers and entrepreneurs, that when you said caged, right, in captivity, that so resonated with me of like, yeah, I have felt trapped for the last year. And... I have been growing a company despite that feeling and our team has been growing and, you know, it's this strange feeling where you have all this growth happening and you're trying to figure out how to manage it in the middle of it. And yeah, I think we're, we're starting to all of a sudden turn around and realize there's all these emotions that we haven't ever given ourselves permission to feel. Yeah, well, you can't see me, but I'm uh, crying again. So there you go. <laughs> Well, I just yeah. have to say vulnerability looks beautiful on Wendy Papazian. Be- mm-hmm. Seeing your heart right now is is amazing. And we fully give you permission to be free. Take some time mm-hmm. and go do what you want to do. And you have mm-hmm. done a phenomenal job leading over the last year. Phenomenal. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and watching your growth. Not just, and, not just your team, but like the family. I'm ugly crying. And all I'm these ugly crying. <laughs> Yeah, it's time for a break, Wendy. Yeah. That, that's, it's time, you know, when you, when you mm-hmm. hit your limit and, you know, it's okay that you have. Mm-hmm. You, you, you've not only, just to emphasize what these gals have said, you've not just led your team, you've led us. Yeah. You've led the dolls. We, you know, our company Amplify, we just kind of peaked at, at this huge experience where we hired an executive director and, and the come down from that. And, you know, and, and all, you and led you that team. And, and Wendy did that. I, I mean, we, yeah, 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 just to be Wendy clear. Yeah, when, when, yeah. I mean, we, we did hire, but Wendy is who followed that long step process that we've taught mm-hmm. on hiring, which is a lot of work. And mm-hmm. just having permission to be free, I think, allows for us not to also make decisions in the moment too, but other than mm-hmm. the decision to go do what you want for a period of time and then recircle back and maybe do yeah. like me. We can be doing our job descriptions together again. Well, this was this was an awesome off the cuff episode, ladies. And you know, I'm glad that we that we did it. I'm glad we just kind of recorded what was going on in our lives. It was unscripted, unfiltered, right? And I mean this is almost, I would say the most like someone was eavesdropping on us episode we've yes. ever done. I mean, this is just <laughs> how we talk. I mean, this 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 could be that. But, you know, just, just to kind of go back a little bit, I love what Sarah said about, hey, you know, my role has to evolve as my company and my world has evolved. And, mm-hmm. and just taking a look at that. And I think that's a whole episode that I'd like to propose us doing. I think that's yeah. great. I love, you know, Seychelles and, and Wendy's raw talk about, you know, coming out of, COVID quarantine, basically, and what that feels like, you know, what it feels like to literally come out of your cage, you know, and reemerge into society. I think we're all feeling it to some degree. I love what Sarah and her dad are doing with the uh, red, yellow, and green. And it's just like that, that reframe works for me. You know, everyone's kind of in one of those color codes really with COVID. And so I love being purposeful about, okay, what's my approach with each one? Because I'm not so sure I am purposeful. About, about each of those. So I think that's well, really, really great. Yeah, you made one last good point too that I'll throw into the wrap, which is um, we all are feeling like we want something that we can take control of right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for many of us, it's our bodies, it's our health. schedules, health, right? And so, you know, I appreciate you sharing your journey with that too. Yeah, oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, that that's to me about setting new habits in this new world that we're mm-hmm. in and what does it look like? And we're all kind of trying to feel our way a little bit. It definitely feels like transition time and like we're waiting with anticipation yeah. for what it's all going to look like, right? So once again, thank you all of our listeners for listening and supporting us on Empire Building and we will see you next week. Bye guys. Bye guys. Bye guys. Thanks for listening to Empire Building. If you like what you heard, join our tribe by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. And help us spread the word by leaving a five-star rating and review. Until next time, wishing you a life worth living. And remember, you are an empire builder.